are you all doing? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana baby, right here. Listen, I told you guys that moving to Africa is now a movement. It's a revolution that is happening and you cannot do anything about it. Listen, when you talk about moving to Africa, I think I've done videos in the Gambia, Sierra Leone, Liberia, yeah. Ghana, and all of you think that, oh, moving to Africa is just about going to Ghana. Yeah. yeah. Ghana is light everywhere. That's why nice. we are the light of the world. Oh, wow. You, you know are that? the light of the Ghana, is the light of the world? <laughs> no. We are making Africa home again everywhere in Africa. And South Africa is also chosen. Nelson Mandela is from here because one of my favorite quote of Nelson Mandela was it always seems impossible until it's done. I think most of you might be wondering like why would you leave America and move to Africa? See, they, they're already waiting for me. Like, I, can, you, can you get closer to me? I'm super excited. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Hi. What's up, brother? Good to see you. No, I mean, I'm going to hug you. Sorry about that. <laughs> welcome. Walk, yeah. Oh, welcome? Well, yeah, no. welcome to South Africa. Yeah. Oh. I, I'm from Africa, and they're telling me that welcome to South Africa. <laughs> welcome to our home. But I, I want to say, welcome to the motherland. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Listen, I, I thought I'm going to see some horses or some camel. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. This, this, is a, this is a horse and a camel, eh? Yeah, together. Wow. That's a Porsche, man. Yeah. You live here? I'm here. I'm here. I live here. You live here? Yeah, I'm the owner. I thought in Africa we live in huts. We do. Big ones. Big old mud huts. This is it. This, this is what we aspire to, so here we are. Wow. Yeah. Hello everybody, this is Mark Blanton from The Real South Africa. And I am Latasha Blanton, also with The Real South Africa. When you hear the name Africa, before coming here, mm -hmm. what goes through your mind before coming to Africa in the first time? Well, it's funny you say that because, like I said, I never really thought about Africa. Nobody had anything positive to say. You know, I grew up, you know, born in 1969, good, good year. And through all those years, nobody said anything positive. It was always negative from television, things that we all know. Um, and then, so I didn't think very positive of Africa, regardless of where it was. You're smiling a lot. I'm laughing because we have this conversation all the time about how we feel like we were lied to until we actually got here. And we were expecting to see something not this. And then when we got here, it just, like, my brain had a hard time computing what I was taught and what I was seeing. Tell me some of the lies you had. Oh, wow. I mean, there, there was no real infrastructure here. I know my niece asked me one time, she says, you know, Uncle Mark, is there anything there? So basically there was nothing there. Um, the only thing that we did know that we, we saw on TV that there was always poverty. If there was any wars going on anywhere on the continent, as big as it is, it was happening in, in all of Africa. Um, they, didn't, they didn't have running water. They didn't, uh, education was, what is that? Um, just the whole plethora of things that we heard before we got here, um, you know, it's, it's very off-putting. You know, for example, we had a young lady call us the other day and she was saying, I want to eat good food. I, wanna, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. And she was calling from America. And I'm like, so basically what you're telling me is you want to do what Africans do. Because that's what we do all the time. <laughs> food is affordable. Food is cheap. Yeah, that's why I'm going to be here forever because food over women for me. I don't even care about her. I, I would choose this over her any day. Maya, they know that I love food. Maya! Ah. <laughs> I don't even have to continue because my question has already been answered in a positive way. Yeah. But tell me, are there roads in Africa? Yes. Um, we're looking at a road. Yeah, highways. Right in front of there's a road. Yeah. And there's, and there's, um, there's actually structural homes, not huts, that you just mentioned. So we have, uh, oh, we, oh, and we have actual cars too, not just horses and camels. Yeah. Are you surviving in Africa or oh. you are living? We 
we're living very well, not just because of the things that we have, it's just the fact that we're around other, other people like us. And it just makes it better. So when people are calling on you, checking on you, hey, are you available tomorrow? Let's, let's, have a, you know, let's, let's sit down and have a drink. Let's mm. talk about things. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's very uplifting because they actually care about you. Doesn't mean you couldn't do that in America. I, no, nobody, everybody's too busy. Everybody's working. I, was, I used to be that guy. I used to be working all the time, you know, and then when we had our businesses, we was working even more. So you really don't have time for all that. You really don't. You bought this or you rented it? We bought this house. We bought this house. Because in South Africa, we found that you can actually purchase property and, it, and you, get a, you get a title of the house or the deed in your name once you purchase the home. As an African-American? As an African-American, yeah. As a foreigner. Yeah. Coming to South Africa, mm -hmm. you wanted to buy a home. Correct. In Africa? Yes. Is this a million dollar home? <laughs> <laughs> it's well over a million rands, let's say that, in South African money. So which means that it's okay to live good in Africa. This, this is not a million, a yeah. million rand is not a million dollar. Yeah. I don't know the calculation yet, but I'll do it and tell the yeah. guys later. It's, 60, it's, six, it's 61,000 US dollars, a million rand. 61,000 yeah, dollars? Not for this house. Okay. But I, I, would, I, would, I would tell you, um, you know, straight up, you know, obviously for, you know, people that, that are looking to, you know, move to uh, South Africa, I mean, you could buy places that are much larger um, and, of course, something more um, towards, you know, your budget, yeah. um, you know, based off where you are. We were, we have been looking at South Africa for years to move. So it wasn't like we just picked up and just did it overnight. So we had planned and planned and we put our, put our, put our things in, in order. So I think for us, when we bought, it, bought this home, it was roughly about two, 230 US. Yeah, about, yeah, um, like about 230 US when we bought this home. How many bedrooms? Um, we got a three bedroom. We could have made it four because they were still building the house when we purchased it. But we just wanted three because it's just us. We, we, we're the two that live here. No, you know, you know the reason why I'm asking you? Because sure. like when you buy a property, you buy the environment. And mm. where you are living, it's more like a paradise, yeah? A little bit. A little ah, bit. Come on, like you have the greens, <laughs> you have good roads. It's well structured. I mean, yeah. this estate alone is super organized, man. I, please, show me the way because I want to buy a property here too. <laughs> <laughs> but if I buy houses everywhere. Whoa, this is a beautiful house, yeah? Thank you, thank you, Walter. Thank you, thank you. Whoa. But tell me, how is South Africa so far? Good morning, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any complaints. I mean, like no complaints. I get to be myself every day, which is just a black person without having to think about being black every day. Um, I get to eat good food. I have nice weather. Um, there's good people around. Yeah. And I think that that in and of itself just like adds to your overall like mental health and well being. So that's what I like about being like, I feel like I'm healthier mentally just living here. Now, what, what really inspired you to choose South Africa as the destination to move to? Well, to be honest with you, obviously there was a documentary that came out, you know, Blacks Without um, Borders, living the, chasing the American dream in South Africa. It probably came out 2008, 2009. And honestly, that was the first and the only uh, you know, thing that I ever saw that said, you know, Africa. And it looked nice. Hmm. And I was like, okay, great. And so then in 2010, I ended up coming here for World Cup. Um, I used to work for the U.S. government, and so I had to come here, and I was in, I was thoroughly impressed, you know, thoroughly impressed with with the infrastructure, what I saw, the food, the people. I mean, the vibe was in, on ten, you know, doing World Cup, and it, you know, it still rises to ten from time to time, yeah. especially before COVID. But um, but yeah, it was, you know, that was that that inspired us to 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 say, you know what. Maybe South Africa is something that we can actually achieve, you know. So, and so here we are. So you moved here in which year? We moved here in 2018. We, we moved here in 2018, but I want people to understand that, you know, it was a journey. It wasn't like we just picked up and moved. Uh, we actually, you know, we came in 2010, then actually I came in 2010, then 2011 she showed up. 
and we both can. And I brought brought my uh, my daughter when she was little. Now she's still now she's 24 and coming on her own, which is great. Wow. Um, and then I brought my mom, and you know that was like her best trip ever. Wow. And her mind, she was like that was you know she's I've taken her to Hawaii. I've t she's been to the Caribbean. She's done that, but until she passed, that's all she talked about was South Africa. So she told me, she's, you know, not on her dying bed, obviously, but just in conversation. She says, Mark, if you can get there, go. And uh, well, here I am. And, and so that inspired me as well, because, you know, she gave me her blessing. And um, so we came here and we, we, we didn't look back, but it was a journey. We came here many times before we actually settled in. Actually, you know, how, how, can you, how can you leave? the land of milk and honey and come to South Africa. Because we don't live inside a square box, it's called televisions. So most people see America through television, through the movies, through that and so forth. But we don't live in those spaces. We actually are on the ground. And unfortunately, where we come from, you know, we're not highly regarded at, at, at all, um, regardless of, you know, what our positions are, you know, her education level, you know, my achievements in, in the military and of course, with the government, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, you can you can carve out a little niche for yourself, um, but you're always defending it. And um, it got to a point to where I didn't want to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I was fortunate that I actually came here because if I think if I never would have came to Africa at all and just kind of listened to the what was going on on TV, I would have never came here. I've been I'd have been doing what everybody else does. Everybody moves to you know I'm East Coast. Yeah, because. Things are expensive and we're always at the bottom of the, of the totem pole, so we make the, the least money. So we got to make moves. So I prop, most of my friends are somewhere in one of those places, mm. like most of my friends. Um, but n none of them have said, you know what, Africa. So I'm, I'm sure I would have been this very similar to them, um, which is nothing wrong with. I just happened to get the opportunity to see Africa for what it is. Cost of living in South Africa? <laughs> Cost of living is good here. I, I can honestly say I've been here. I remember when we came here in 2009, right? No, 10. No, 2010. When you came into the Yeah. And the, yeah, and, the, and the exchange rate was, was, what was the exchange rate? It was like nine to one, right? And I was like, Wow, this is great. I mean, I can I could do well for myself. Yeah. Because there was a time that I was thinking about moving to another uh, state car, Arizona, because it was a little cheaper. Not anymore. Um, houses were a little cheaper. Retirement. A lot of people were retiring there, and I just decided to say, you know what, I'm gonna go to Arizona until I came here. Mm. And that was a long time ago, nine to one. Right now, we're at sixteen to one today. So we've been enjoying since we've been here. What? Uh, 12 to 1, 14 to 1, 15 to 1, and 16 to 1. And it's, and it's been as high as 18, I believe, to 1. During uh, COVID, you couldn't go anywhere, but yeah. it was that high. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it, it was it was up there. And so um, I don't, the whole time I've never seen it just drop over all these years. So I think that the, the cost of living in South Africa for for people who, who, who have the, the British pound, the, the US dollar, even the Canadian um, um, monies and even other other places you can live you can live pretty well um you can live pretty well you're living <laughs> in africa and you have a swimming pool at your backyard yeah i needed this this was part of my requirement as we were looking for homes you know yeah. there were certain things she was looking for um there were certain things that i was looking for in the u.s i had a pool um was as nice as this one um <laughs> No, it wasn't. Yeah, because it different lights up at night, and I like that. Uh, you know, I got a little, uh, little mood light. It changes the colors. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, though all these things are possible here because first of all, the weather supports it most of the time. We get a couple cool months, like right now, and then, you know, I, I just, I just needed to be here. Period. But what are you doing here at this very moment? Hello, everyone. It's Latasha Blanton with The Real South Africa. As you guys already know, we are the premier travel company here in South Africa, specifically designed to bring diaspora like you 
to South Africa. If you've been to our website, thank you. If you haven't, you need to go because it's designed to make booking easy for you. You can book your trips, day trips directly from the website, which means you can get to South Africa a whole lot quicker and a whole lot sooner. So please be a part of the grassroots movement. Get to South Africa it has everything you could possibly imagine. We've been everywhere else in the world. And as diasporan, we deserve to be here in Africa. But yeah, so we, we were in business for 10 years easily. And then, so when you become entrepreneurs, you just kind of, you're used to it. So we came here, actually just before we came here, we looked at the tourism space. We said, okay, let's let's see what the tourism space. I, I did all my research, I, you know, the same way I would do for our physiotherapy businesses that we had back in the U.S. And I'm like, you know what, there's a big, there's a big market here. Mm. Um, but if we attack this properly, or we can actually provide you know, proper, um, you know, tourism options for those yes. that are in the diaspora who keep asking us when we were there, man, when you going back to South Africa, man, I want to go, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to go, I want to go. So there was a lot of people asking us about coming to South Africa. Mm. Um, and a lot of people were calling us because they just thought we were the authorities on South Africa anyway, because because we was here all the time. Yeah. So which means that you bring African-Americans or Africans living in the diaspora who mm -hmm. wants to visit South Africa, you make it possible for them. Very possible, yes. But you, you call yourself the real South Africa. <laughs> Why the real South Africa? Well, it's, it's, to us, we wanted people to see the South Africa that we saw from 2010, 11, 12, 15, 18. We wanted them to see that South Africa and the South Africa that we saw was very progressive. We met a lot of great people. We met people that were in business. We, we, we met people that, you know, owned their homes and, and nice estates. You know, they they even had their own businesses, driving nice cars. They, you know, they they almost shamed shamed me, and I was like, this doesn't make any sense. Matter of fact, um, you know, I I, I wanted a 911 back then, and I, I kept coming back here, and I met guys that were driving like Toyota Corollas. And two years later, they're rolling around in, in a 911 in Porsche. I'm like, what am I waiting on? <laughs> you know, so they motivated me. Um, so that South Africa is the South Africa that we wanted people to see, that it ex actually existed um, versus what they've been seeing on TV. Like when they put Google South Africa, they start mm. showing all the, mm. you know, the bad stuff that they show. Sure. And I'm like, no, there's, a, there's another South Africa. So we just named our company The Real no, South Africa. Africa. So we're gonna, we're gonna wrap this thing up. Um, hopefully tomorrow and then so then you can guys can go to our website and start you know booking your trips to Durban where we are right now where else they can book Tasha? Uh, they can book to Cape Town we're um, settling in on some new adventures in, uh, in Pumalanga for you guys mm -hmm. and also in Limpopo and we're thinking about adding the Eastern Cape because I hear a lot of good things about that obviously we did it before but they've got some really exciting things that we want to share with you guys so hopefully we'll be adding the Eastern Cape yeah so Stay tuned with The Real South Africa. Obviously, you guys know, and of course, it's a grassroots movement, so let everybody know, hey, this is how you get here. We we are professionals. We, we put the work in uh, to be in this location. We did. And we did. put the work in to make sure that the people that come um, enjoy themselves as well. So we will see you soon. And so far, so good? So far, so good. Even through COVID, um, it's been really, it's been, it's been good for a lot of reasons. I think, you know, for us, you know, I think we're, I think we ultimately going to leave a, a, a what you call it, a, a legacy. Hope so. Because there's so many people that are coming here, um, discovering South Africa for the first time, discovering mm -hmm. Africa for the first time, coming here saying, you know what, I want to stay in South Africa or I want to go to another country. But now these people are geared towards going to Africa. Full stop. And I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, regardless of where you go, come to Africa. If you have one message for your fellow brothers and sisters in the dash, what would that message be? What are you waiting on? That's what I would say. <laughs> but whoa. Yeah, like what are you waiting for? Everyone that we talk to on the phone have these like grand plans. Like I'm gonna come in 2023 or 2024 or 2025. And all those things are great. But the one thing that I remember um, when his mother was living, she, I had mentioned that I wanted to do something. Hmm. And she looked me dead in the face and she was like, that's not promised to you. And it was like, like at that moment, it was like, she's so right. Like the next moment's not promised. So like, what am I actually waiting for? So yeah. 
I don't, so we don't wait anymore. We don't wait until we retire. We don't wait until we have a baby. We don't wait until we get the good job. You just have to make a plan because what I found is that if you really want to do something, mm. you're going to find a way to do it. Just make a plan. Go to our website. <laughs> <laughs> Book. Book. Yeah. I mean, we all know what's going on in that side. A lot of times we, we act like we don't know, you know, the, the people. I, 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 I simply don't know unless you tell me. Okay, well, you know, people, <laughs> underst people understand that it's, it's a scenario where, you know, prices are getting high. I mean, we all watched that TV show, Good Times. We all did. And, um, you know, it's hard for us, us black folks. So whatever they announce announcing on TV, it's harder for us. And it's time, you know, I mean, we don't got all the degrees. We don't got, we don't have the positions. We're making six figures and, and we're still struggling trying to make it. And so I'm saying, and my message is if, you know, moving around the country isn't gonna, isn't gonna make it happen, well then consider Africa as, as an option, you know? And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm here in, in, in South Africa, I love South Africa. They've, it's treated me extremely well, um, simply because, but that's not just for me, it's for everyone. Who wants to come here and contribute? Wow. It's that simple. So just come here with the notion of contributing and then South Africa will love you back. I, I'm so glad you said South Africa will love you back, which means the people in here accept you as one of their own. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I laugh because no matter which culture we run into, they want us, they want us, to, uh, us to be part of, of their culture, yeah. which for us, and as African Americans, I don't, I don't know about other Africans in other parts of the of, of the of the of the continent, but I know for us, they want us to be. I mean, they know our situation, mm. and they want us to be part of something. Mm. So they want you to be. They want you to feel like home. So they have to invite you in, and then you have to accept it, and then you go in, and then you start learning all these things about the culture, of regardless of you're talking to a Zulu person in the belly, whoever you're talking to, you start learning the culture. And the funniest thing about the whole thing is that you end up saying, you know what? This sounds familiar. Mm. <laughs> this sounds familiar. Moving to Africa is now a movement. You agree with me? It is a movement, and uh, I think you know, we get a lot of calls, and people are interested in coming to coming to South Africa. Um, mm. And I think over time, it will hopefully it will grow. You know, with some of the content that you're putting out, and some of the things that we put out on our channel. But I love I love your YouTube channel. I love the videos that you've been posting thank about you, you. South Africa. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. If you like what you saw, please subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notifications button so you don't miss out on all things The Real South Africa. Thanks again. Go check out the YouTube channel, subscribe, and be part of their awesome channel, and trust me, all you need to know about South Africa, you're definitely gonna see it from them. Yeah. yeah. Final message to all my audience. Guys, this guy here has been, has, has, has been giving you all the keys to everything you need to know. So if you are interested, if you're an African on the continent, if you want to know something about another um, place on the, on the continent, you need to check out his channel. No, for real. You need that to that was it. not a message. No, 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 no. <laughs> that, that was no, not no, a message. No. I think he's doing well. I think he's doing, I think, I think that's a, I think that's a, I think that's a good message. I think that's a good message. Keep following. Yeah. Keep following this, keep but, following but, this but, guy. But like I said, all you know, if you want to know anything about South Africa, this is the channel for you to subscribe. I'm just here as a messenger. Maybe some of you might not know him. That's why I'm here. <laughs> so I'm doing your job for you. Now you know. So check out the description box. The link is going to be there. Subscribe. Be part of the channel. Tell them that Wadamaya told me that it's by force to come in here. Yeah, right. My name is Wadamaya. You're one and only annoying village boy from Ghana. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you all in the next one. Aya Maya. Peace out.